Hello and welcome to BioPsych. This webinar will introduce you to the information content of BioPsych and to the many tools available to help you search and analyze BioPsych data. Our overall mission at BioPsych is to provide you with up-to-date and comprehensive information on genomes, metabolic pathways, and regulation, together with powerful bioinformatics tools for searching, visualizing, and analyzing that information. Our users tell us BioPsych is very easy to use, and it provides an integration of extensive and high-quality data to form a one-stop shop. It also provides an amazing assortment of bioinformatics tools that we'll now review real quickly. The most basic use cases of BioPsych are to help you search for information on genes and pathways. For example, starting out the BioPsych home page with the E. coli K12 database selected as our current database, we can search for a gene such as DEOD, hit enter, and we get a gene page for DEOD. The gene page has several different sections that show basic information about the genes, what reaction does its gene product catalyze, what pathways is it in, what are the regulatory influences on this gene, and there's a really extensive mini review summary that our curators have authored about this gene. But then there are other sections as well, such as essentiality information for the gene, reactions that the gene catalyzes, protein features defined on the gene, such as uh, phosphate binding sites, mutagenesis uh, variants, metal ion binding sites. There also is the operon containing the gene shown here. From this page, we can click here to go to the genome browser, which shows this gene and its nearby genome region from which we can, for example, zoom in and out. Uh, we can zoom in steps at a step at a time or we can go directly to the sequence level and see the, both the nucleotide and the amino acid sequence for this gene. We can also use the genome browser in a comparative mode. Here, the comparative genome browser aligns five different genomes at the DEOD gene from E. coli K12 and its orthologs in the other genomes and shows the surrounding genome regions with orthologs drawn in the same color. We can also go from a gene page in our human database, such as DDC, to a page describing the reaction catalyzed by the gene product, to a page for the pathway containing that reaction, and we can turn on display of chemical structures in the pathway. We can also click on a metabolite to go to a metabolite information page, page that shows, for example, the full set of reactions in this database, the human database known to act on this metabolite. Going back to the pathway page, another operation we can perform is to show where this pathway lies in the full human metabolic pathway map. This is what we call the cellular overview diagram for humans. Uh, this diagram is produced by our software and here's the serotonin biosynthesis pathway right here that we just came from. Each organism in BioPsych gets its own custom metabolic pathway map diagram that's zoomable and scrollable and searchable. For example, we can use this menu to search for a metabolite or a gene. We can also perform a species comparison between E. coli and other organisms in BioPsych using this diagram. What we, we've just done a comp comparison between E. coli and Bacillus subtilis, and all of the metabolic reactions that they share are highlighted in red. The reactions unique to E. coli are, highlight, are, are not highlighted in red. So this entire pathway here is uh, unique to E. coli. Now we can also use this cellular overview diagram for analysis of high throughput data sets. Here I've read in a tab delimited file of transcriptomics data for E. coli and the resulting transcriptomics data values are mapped to a color scale shown on the left and painted, used, used to color the different reaction steps in the diagram and I can zoom in to see what's going on in more detail we can see in this case the fermentation pathway is highly expressed. Now, we actually have six time points in this data set, so I can turn on an animated display of this data, and we can watch how over the six time steps, the fermentation pathway gets uh, downregulated. Another tool available is 
the software will produce a set of pathway diagrams sorted by their pathway activation level, which again is computed from the underlying transcriptomics data. So we can see this is the most highly upregulated pathway in the set. Another tool in BioPsych for transcriptomics data analysis is called the omics dashboard. The omics dashboard, here we're looking at the exact same omics data set in the omics dashboard, which has different panels for cellular systems such as biosynthesis, degradation, central dogma, and for each of those panels is divided into subsystems like amino acid biosynthesis, carbohydrate biosynthesis, carbohydrate degradation, DNA metabolism, RNA metabolism, and it's essentially showing us, giving us an overview of each of those cellular systems and how they're responding across the six time points that we're seeing. And we can drill down through several different levels. Here we're looking at the same type of diagram for every amino acid biosynthetic pathway and we can click on one of those for even more detail to see, to graph the expression levels of the genes in that pathway, and we can look at the available pathway diagram as well. Now we can also use this same metabolic map diagram to visualize metabolomics data. So here we've read a metabolomics data set into our human metabolic pathway map, and we can look at more detail at um, the metabolite levels in, in this data set. And we can also uh, graph metabolite levels as well. Biopsych provides several kinds of access to regulatory data. For example, in our B. subtilis database, we can look up a, a transcription factor such as PURR. We can go to its gene page, and for transcription factors, there's often a Regulon tab that lists the full set of operons that are regulated by a transcription factor such as PURR. A tool called the Regulatory Overview shows the complete regulatory network of an organism such as Bacillus subtilis. And for example, I can click on a transcription factor and highlight all the genes that that transcription factor regulates. Biopsych has multiple comparative tools. This tool called the Comparative Genome Dashboard lets us compare a number of genomes from a functional point of view. Like the genome dashboard, this diagram is divided up into multiple different panels, but here we're actually comparing the functional complements of these different uh, organisms shown at the top here. Um, for example, we're showing, listing, if, if we're, we're showing here the number of amino acid biosynthetic pathways present in each of these genomes, and the number of carbohydrate biosynthetic pathways, cofactor biosynthetic pathways, carbohydrate degradation pathways, energy metabolism pathways, transport capabilities, central dogma, genes, response to stimulus, cellular processes and virulence related genes. And we can drill down into any of these topics to see more detailed comparisons. Uh, here for amino acid biosynthesis, we click, click again to get a list of all the amino acid biosynthetic pathways present in each of these organisms. A powerful capability unique to BioPsych is called smart tables. Smart tables allow us to upload a set of genes or metabolites or pathways from a file into a, a stored table within the BioPsych website. In this case, we've uploaded a set of human metabolites. We can use the database to add different columns to the smart table, such as chemical formula and monoisotopic molecular weight and uh, the chemical structure of, the, of each of these metabolites. We can also perform a transformation to map each of these metabolites to the one or more metabolic pathways that it's present in. Here we've transformed the, the metabolites to the set of metabolic pathways containing each of those metabolites. We can create a new smart table from that list of metabolic pathways, and for each of those pathways, we can transform it to the set of genes contained within that pathway. Now, overall, BioCyte contains 20,000 databases for sequenced organisms, mostly microbes. Of the 20,000 databases, 70 are curated, with their contents derived from 130,000 publications. And the organisms in BioPsych span humans,
pathogens, model organisms such as yeast and mouse, cyanobacteria, and many more. And Biopsych overall supports the use cases listed here. Basic information finding, analysis of transcriptomics and metabolomics data, sequence analysis operations, many, most of which you haven't seen yet, comparative analysis, and synthetic biology. Here's the procedure that we follow when we create a new Biopsych database. We obtain the genome for that organism from the NIH RefSeq database. We do not reannotate the genome. Instead, we perform a set of computational inferences, data imports, and for selected genomes, we perform curation. The computational inferences include inference of metabolic and transport reactions, prediction of metabolic pathways, predictions of operons and protein complexes, and computing orthologs with other biopsych databases. Data import operations include importing of go terms and protein feature data from Uniprot. Biopsych curation involves manual literature searches for new gene functions and pathways in the organism and entry of those gene functions and pathways. Curators also author mini reviews and insert citations and evidence codes. They update many different database fields from gene names to enzyme cofactors to protein features like metal ion bonding, binding sites. Curators review and extend enzyme and transporter reaction associations. They review predicted metabolic pathways. They also enter regulatory information such as transcription factor binding sites, promoters, and regulatory interactions. One of the most highly curated databases in Biopsych and the first database is the EcoPsych database describing E. coli K12. Its contents have been derived from 43,000 publications and it includes many dimensions of information about E. coli, describing its metabolic pathways, its regulatory network, gene essentiality data, growth under alternative nutrient conditions, and it contains 3,800 page equivalents of these mini review summaries authored by our curators. Another highly curated database within Biopsych is the MetaPsych Universal Metabolic Pathway Database that describes metabolism from all domains of life. It's a literature-based database with extensive references and commentary. It's been derived from 75,000 publications and contains 3,100 metabolic pathways from all domains of life. Now, as you begin to use Biopsych, um, you will, it will ask you to create an account. Accounts are free, and signing up for an account gives you a month of free access to Biopsych. And I'll note that creating an account is required even if your institution has a subscription already. You can look at the top banner of the Biopsych homepage to describe to determine if your organization organization already subscribes. So notice up here it says SRI International Subscriber, indicating that it, it knows I'm based on my IP address, it knows I'm from a subscribing institution. Now two of the Biopsych databases are freely available, but subscriptions are required to access the remaining 20,000 databases. Uh, and subscription revenues support the curation activities that we perform for Biopsych. We provide three types of subscriptions, institutional subscriptions, lab level subscriptions, and subscriptions for individuals. For more detail and to sign up for a subscription, please click on this link. And thank you for your interest in Biopsych.